channel gonna start uh, interviewing people uh, if you're interested make sure to give us a holler at any of meets and events that I'm at and uh, I'll capture your story welcome to between two cars where I go to random places and ask people about their cars <laughs> today I'm here with Joel with his Lotus um, how's it going Joel yeah pretty good yourself I'm going all right so I like to ask you, what got you into cars? It's a good question, actually. <laughs> That's uh, all right. Take your time. Years ago, I've I've always sort of had a passion for cars, and one of my first favorite cars was probably the Supra. Uh, my yep. dad worked at Toyota for years, and I've seen them before. And uh, and after I sort of got my first car, I was sort of reignited back into. I was like, ah, I don't need a cheap three two three Astina. Um, started going through, and you know, I went through the. Korean cars first and then into Korean into, cars? Yeah, a little uh, Tiburon actually. Okay, um, right. First V6 and then after that got into Supras, uh, then had RX-8s, uh, had an FD RX-7, um, then I've gone through pretty much newer cars, I've gone through a lot of newer cars. Um, basically gone through everything. <laughs> I've, I've almost touched every single brand at the moment so I'm, I'm trying to do bingo. So. Yeah. Out of all these cars, what, what makes a car unique for you? Just the way it drives and the way it makes you feel is probably the main one. Um, you know, just the way it's you sort of connect to the road, and that's the one thing I love about the Lotus. Yep. Is that it is raw. It's no power steering. It's just manual mirrors. Uh, it's barely got airbags. Um, it's barely got frames. It's just nothing, and you feel everything on the road. Uh, that's one thing why I love this car. One of, the, to be fair, it's my favourite car so far. Okay. Did, have you done much in terms of modification, or have you ever delved into that? Uh, it's got a um, just cold air intake, nothing spectacular. Um, yep. Tow hooks, because it's already been a tow truck, but okay, that's different. Uh, but apart from that, no, I've um, I've gone through most times. I'll try and do a lot of your yeah, engine mods and everything first, and yep. you know performance before I touch anything aesthetic. But at the moment, it's going to be a long-term project, so I'll let you just chuck some carbon into it, and money. And you've mentioned you've only had this car for a short time. Mm -hmm. How often do you actually swap cars? That's a good question. Uh, I try not to. <laughs> it's <laughs> circumstantial. Uh, I've got an Evo as my daily, an Evo 7. Yeah. Uh, and I've kept that for a while. And then before then, uh, I had a C63. And I only sold that because of health issues. And then before that, I had an R35 GDR. And I broke the gearbox. So I was like, nah, sold that. And before then, I had a Kia Stinger, which I was just, yeah, it's a good car, but I was over being mistaken for a cop everywhere I drove. So, isn't that like a bonus? Yeah, it's good when you're sitting down like the base of Matt and me, and people just <laughs> slam the brakes on. So I, I get a bit yep. of a laugh out of that. But no, it's uh, all of them have been good cars so far. The GDR was an experience, but still something. Do you have any horror stories? Would it be the GTR? Uh, probably to be fair, ooh, nah, probably the, my RX-7, I had an FD RX-7, um, yeah. and I remember I was driving up through, uh, on, on the radar, it was just black on the, the weather chart, Yeah. and it was coming down, so it was coming up to me, it was from the sunny coast heading down, Yeah. and to my wisdom at the time, I think I was like 20, I was like, ah, I'll just drive through it, and I'll cut through the time half, you know, it's just science yeah um, I realized that something that light with basically no traction nothing um, <laughs> oh, I was no. hydroplaning I couldn't see barely a meter in front of me yeah um, that was probably one of the worst stories but apart from that I've uh, I've almost been a couple times but nothing yet 
knock on wood. Uh, but it's outside of that, no, it's, I'm pretty lucky when it comes to everything, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, most people, when I talk to them, they always have this story where they were stranded in the rain, yep. in the middle of nowhere, and they're waiting for a tow truck. Uh, yep, yep, I feel you. Tell me a little about the Lotus. Yeah, so the uh, Lotus, this is the Series 3. So the Series 3 is a V6 from a Camry. Camry. It's a 2GR FE. Uh, basically, it's roughly 3, 350 brake horsepower, uh, supercharged by Harrop. Wow. Um, and outside of that, it weighs just shy of one point, so about 1.14 ton. Um, so powder weight's quick, and it's just a yep. six-speed Toyota gearbox. So it's essentially a Toyota drivetrain, yep. um, surrounded by a car, pretty much a fiberglass shell and a very thin chassis. Um, all aluminium. Everything in the engine's pretty much um, just built by Lotus and tuned by Lotus. So it's I've, I've driven the TRD. Camrys before because they run the exact same. Yeah. Um, the responsiveness between the two is just insane. Like the the speed it revs, uh, just the way it drives. Um, they've really just mastered the engine in this. Yeah. Don't see many Lotuses around in Australia. Yeah. There's um, there's not many around. Most of the people who seem to own them normally just do track days only, or yep. they will um, just have them as sort of their retirement weekenders. Um, because they're not overly cheap cars either, so it's you know that sort of demographic that you'll see. But I mean, to be fair, I'm I don't baby the kilometres on any car I've had. I think I was daily driving the RX7, and I did about I think the most was sixteen thousand in a year. Uh, outside of that, I do maybe between twenty five thousand k's between cars, depending. So I hammer it. Well, thanks for talking to me today. My pleasure. Uh, mind if we do like a tour of your car? Yeah, of course. Awesome. Perfect.